Hello everybody, my name is Gregory Chemis. How are you? Growing up, I've always known a lot of skills related to technology because I was surrounded by a family who used to own a business in technology in Bellevue, Washington. In the 90s, um, my grandmother owned a, uh, a company called Northwest Technology Solutions, I believe it's called, or something like that. It's long past gone, but, um, but it introduced me to a type of, a type of um, service, you know, 25 years ago, or 30 years ago almost, where basically it would become the beginning of the future and I didn't know it. I was too young to know it. But one of the things I re <clears throat> one of the things I realized was that um along the way, you know, when I entered school in 1999, uh that was the beginning of a lot of trending topics and uh most of them were surrounded by video and and media and stuff. And so I wanted to tell you this because I have a little bit of background in creative writing and professionalism and media and lyrics and stuff, even long before I became self-employed. And I think that might be relevant to to how I began to be so so skilled at um, at my craft and stuff. I never really thought about it before. But one of the things today, besides video and marketing and multimedia and lyrics and everything else that I do, you know, that is really, um, that's really um, helpful to know about is how to create webinars of your own. And though I don't have a camera to actually show you my face, I am going to be able to show you a picture of me, hopefully, when... Um, when this presentation is over and before that because people really like to know their customer and one of the things that's so hard about about being a jack of all trades if that's all uh, if that's what it is is that not everybody recognizes that or pays you fairly and so one of the things i wanted to introduce to you in a in a couple of courses is how to how to get your brand, how to get your skills, how to get your uh, your work out there so that people people will know what you do and who you are. And I wanted to I wanted to basically give you some examples of this um while I while I prepare to um while I prepare my materials for you. So if you can stay through the entire presentation it's going to teach you a couple things, and I hope you will get some benefits out of it. Thank you very much. Bye.
To start understanding media, you have to know the history of media. And when we talk about media, we're talking about three different things. We're talking about we're talking about um, music. We're talking about uh, video, and we're talking about um, the internet. But we're also talking about things that has to do with advancement and technology. So everybody might have heard. Everybody might have heard um, of the of the comp corporation Microsoft, probably long before Amazon was developed, which is an e-commerce store. And then they and then they were competing with Apple, right? Because we have the Mac and we have the Windows system. And I'm not here to debate which ones are better because it's really up to um, how easy the the GUI, the graphic user interface is for others. Now, what I want to talk to you about tonight, right now at least, is um, how to is how to how to adjust some audio. And this is key because if you don't know how to adjust audio or if you don't know how to um, how to make people hear you then you're either going to have to type captions um, which um, I'm very good at but that's not the point here right now or you're going to have to uh, uh, struggle your struggle with your ears to try and hear something which could lead to hear, hearing loss so I want to talk to you about some of the key things that I use for um, for recording and editing audio. So the th key things that I use for editing and recording audio when it's not related to anything that's um, that's a song, I use a tool called Audacity, which is what I'm currently using right now, and. And let me go ahead and give you a screenshot of that. Audacity is a free open source platform which allows you to record and edit audio with a lot of different plugins and and just mainly it's a platform, the number one platform for free audio editing. Now what makes it so popular is that um, it was created in in 2000 and over 20 years it's had almost 200 200 excuse me 200 million downloads total if not more and um, one of the things that it is so important to note about is that it allows you to use plugins to DS which is critical for for audio it also allows you to use plugins to reduce noise, adjust the volume, the, tr the bass, the treble, and that's just not even amplify, re remove vocals, just a lot of different things, and that's not even getting started. So I wanted to go ahead and, and introduce to you this platform um, because this is, a, this is a, key, a key element to knowing what to do. And one of the things you got to do it, because I'm not doing it right now because I'm recording but one of the things you got to do in audio editing is um, is to uh, is to DS and then amplify your volume otherwise people are not going to hear you so um, I'm gonna go in the next slide I'm gonna show you a screenshot or two about what to do thanks Before I get too technical about how to how to produce and create everything that is necessary, let's go over a um, let's go over an overview of what to do in order to make sure your product is a success. So obviously, the end goal is to make media sales and earn royalties, and and this means that you have successfully created the project. Correct. Now. 
the two main I, I put this in a chart um, to uh, help you help you out and stuff but the two main the two main factors um, related to this is the components of the media like audio video and the narrative and the income source of the of the material which also has its considerations like uh, like uh, the production the requirements the the marketing and all this can be explained in just a few minutes but basically in order to in order to it's like it's like a step-by-step -step process in order to complete um, an audio project you have to edit you have to record properly and you have to make sure everything is nice and flowing and you don't sound like a fool probably like I do right now but because and I say that because I'm I'm very familiar with video editing and video production because again I'm a visual learner so I actually found that creating audio and editing audio was much more complicated than making a video so let's talk about video for a minute well you have to shoot you have to um, you have to encode you have to pass quality control which means you have to also find licenses and get collaboration towards everything that is needed and then there's a third part of the of the component called the narrative which is basically how you tell the story and how it relates or resonates to your audiences and stuff so those are the component parts of it and each one requires a process and stuff some are more complicated than others now the next thing you have to consider at once you're done with making the components is how you're going to display the content and this and this could include production or pre-production or both distribution and then once you go uh, once you're able to pass those parts you think about your strategy for marketing now some people are not very great with marketing others are I'm, I I happen to be one that is not great with marketing so I'm more of a creator but um, but some of the requirements for income is those three tools right there and only when only when you can do those completely and fully it's like a chart two separate processes with three more with three more steps and once you complete those you can worry about how you are going to be more successful with um, selling your product and stuff so after you sold your product you can then you can and you've completed the two steps about components and income then you can only then only can you display the product on your web page or your your social media or whatever and hope somebody buys now in the next in the next um in the next uh section i'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about how to how to how to show you some technical steps of composing and then I'm gonna also talk to you about um, I'm also going to talk to you about how to market keep in mind I'm not a professional with marketing um, and I've been a self-taught person for a very long time but I'm trying to share with you what I know and so I hope you'll tune in thank you going back to the key components that I talked about before it's not as easy as making a website with predisposed templates when you first begin you have to put in the work you have to put in the time you have to put in the budgeting you have to put in planning above all else and 
the best way I can the best way I can describe it is to make a chart like I said and uh, remember what the key components are it's audio video stereo story um, and um, so first you want to do the audio like I'm doing right now you want to possibly DS it which is a plug-in feature with the audacity you can also um, you can also amplify and then and then uh, make your uh, make your customizations that way in audacity as well now let's go let's let's um, let's try to take this a little bit at a time because I know this is a lot of information for you so when you go so assuming you have a recording maybe just make a two minute recording of what you need to do within your notes and then write them down because um, that tactic is going to be very useful when you have to make the captions but um, let's talk about the video first you can make a video anywhere you want to on the phone probably um, probably just use a smartphone and a tripod like I did for um, like I did for all three of my documentaries called the one by one documentaries I made those from uh, 2016 to 2018 and um, it was an experience it really was I won't lie but it was something I was so glad to do and get off my chest afterwards so ab about the video experience you want to make sure that you have an adequate camera, but you also want to make sure that uh, you know how to um, you know how to cut, you know how to shoot, you know how to you know how to um, edit, because not everybody speaks the same language and stuff. Um, and sometimes for TV, you can't have a lot of guns or violence or or sex or anything else. So you want to make sure those parts of it are covered. You also want to make sure you know your audience as well, because um, even though this is this is big in marketing, and I don't know my audience as well as I should, um, at least on that project, you want to know your audience as well, because not um, not everybody is going to be um, um, okay with you know a mature audience film or most of the time they're probably going to be sensitive or younger viewers as young as teenagers or 10 year olds or something so you want to make sure you know your audience too um and use the use the tv guidelines of the united states called uh, the tv parental guidelines in the u.s to know what uh know what to expect and stuff i i highly recommend this because what is really cool about this is it has, you know, several different ratings, but it also has a uh, uh, a descriptor package, you know, one for each each um, factor that is significant, and um, it, there's six levels and stuff. But you can learn more about that. You know, um, I think it was um, President Clinton in 1997 who first implemented that system, and now it's been you know, long since FCC um, mandatory compliance. So, so that's just one example of knowing your audience. The 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 other part of it with video is you got to be really technical and really on point because there may be licenses, there may be there may be um, you have to credit every person in your work. And not all the time do, does it actually work when you credit people in your work because of our wonderful copyright laws and stuff. But there is a way around that um, that uh, section if I uh, if I want to get to that there. It's called fair use, and fair use is especially helpful for education and documentaries and nonprofits and stuff. But um, study more on that with the copyright office as far as storytelling this is the this is the major major component which is more important than uh, more important than audio or video itself because storytelling is the one that um, that portrays your message the best and you know of course 
I think I'm exempt from uh, <laughs> I think I'm exempt from the uh, the standard where basically I was able to produce and complete almost five and a half hours of video and turn them into a documentary each episode but technically you know if you're one of the regular users you maybe have 10 seconds to portray your video now 10 seconds is um is the attention span anymore and i i hate to think that um i hate to think that people are that bored or that unintelligent anymore because that's a rare trait but apparently if you if you want to tell your story you need to and if you want to tell it within an hour or two you need to have some points you need to have some scenes you need to have a clear direction on where you're going and just so you know the reason why I was able to do it for so long like five hours each or more is because I had so much information and I didn't expect everybody to go ahead and watch them in one setting now it's possible that you can but I I wouldn't recommend it but this is the direction you gotta go because only when you only when you have perfect audio perfect video and much more important um, Lee perfect um, storytelling can you think about how how complete your components are um, so this is key because that's only half of the battle Unfortunately, there is no guarantee that you will ever make distribution, so I just want to state that first. But in case you want to complete a film and you want to consider making some money off of it, here's some good tips to help you out. You always want to ask questions, always, because it gets your mind motivated, it gets your brain thinking, and it makes you plan certain stages. I know it's easy to be spontaneous. In fact, I was very spontaneous with my films because I had so much to say that I often made some mistakes. And hence, that's actually why I'm not a marketing expert. But also, you know, there are some problems with social media. There are some problems with marketing. There are some, some, some problems everywhere. And it, and it really comes down to how big is your influence? And what I mean by influence is how much does do people know about you? What is your branding? What is your strategy? What is your what is your overall goal? And again, this really takes time, so I want to I want to break some stuff down for you. But I have some general tips right now. First of all, you want to always take notes. Okay? Even I had to go back and see some notes that I've I've t taken before because um, because it's just it's just easier and that's part of the production process. In fact, there's two there's basically three ways to market your film and and uh, before we wrap up, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you some of the things that you should and should not do. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you produce it correctly. This to me is called the pre-production stage, and it's not really it's not really technically the known thing as pre-production and production and post-production to me. Pre-production is more of like the requirements that we have to think about. So part of pre-production would be um, well, shooting, capturing, and all the the stuff, um, all the planning plus encoding plus um, plus I believe I believe in the United States and a lot of other countries you have to have some captions and ratings available so you got to know all that plus the licensing and anything else and crediting the the actors and production crew 
Now it's a lot easier if you make it yourself, but uh, like I did, but you're also prone to some uh, some uh, limitations if you don't know exactly what you're doing. And that's what I did. I I created the um, I created the, the 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 film before I was able to market it. Here's the thing, though, and this is what I need you to understand because marketing is so tricky that it it's almost as tricky as distribution and the first thing I want you to know is do not expect distribution it's a privilege let me say that again it is a privilege to have yourself um, distributed because less than I think it's one or two percent actually get distributed and you can always self distribute online and stuff now that the internet is available but wouldn't it be cool if you could get your films in theaters or cable or something because you actually did it right? So when you actually have that option, you know, um, you either got to figure out how to pay the fees or you got to pay a percentage and stuff. So that's also a part, part of the pre-production um, phase. When you get to the what I call the production phase, that means you actually have a product worth distributing and um, and that's the hardest part because um, you know technical requirements and uh, and um, all the pre-production stuff it takes up most of the time that you don't think often enough now how do you overcome this problem well, let's say you're done with your pre-production phase and you have your product. Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to um, you want to review what you've made. Then you want to submit it to people, you know, professionals because 9 times out of 10, your your film no matter how good it is won't be accepted. It that's just a fact and it won't be accepted by the producer themselves. So you need what's called an aggregator, and those are unfortunately running out anymore. Um, I, I think one of the biggest aggregators called Distriber just went bankrupt last year, and um, that was one of the biggest people known to known to the industry. In, uh, in I I thought they were headquartered in California, but people who don't know how to distribute are not alone that's why the aggregators are there it's just technical requirements have made it so almost impossible to get your film distributed out to audiences so that's why i say when you sit when you have something worthwhile you know send it out promote it don't think of it as marketing but just promote it a little bit because you need those views even if they're free views you know, it, it's a cycle that I wouldn't know about, but it's a cycle. Now, once you have that, once you have that, and and that part is actually the hardest part, like I said, but once you have that, um, that's when you can work on your marketing plan. And marketing is basically how it's presented to people or how it's displayed to people, okay? So if you have... Obviously, if you have something dis displayed um, to a distributor, your your display is pretty good. If you have a um, a film about a home video or a song you just made or something, um, most likely you'll have to self distribute it yourself. But when you want to market it, that's the that's the time that you. Um, you figure out um, who your who your audience is, uh, how much you want to advertise. Normally, you have to have a big budget, and that's another thing that's a trick for independent filmmakers. But the thing is, you also have to figure out licensing and all the technical requirements. So it really takes a lot of skill to do this. And you know, if you don't, if you're like me, you don't have a lot of um, professional guidance to help you and so that's even more of a time to think about what you can do um the one thing you don't want to do is complete your product without uh without some help and stuff so let me go ahead and give you some tips here about what to do
So we've talked in depth in depth about how to how to um, start a plan and 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 um, you know take notes and all that stuff. Some some additional tips that you should probably consider is um, you know you almost always want a lawyer involved, no matter how costly it is, because they can draft up legal documents such as a letter of intent, which is basically your your right to distribute. You also want to make sure that they can draft up an uh, intellectual property agreement because even if people don't distribute um, your co your content, they won't know it's copyright and their fair use without that IP agreement yourself. And um, the IP agreement uh, protects you from anything that is copywritten that somebody could steal away your rights. Um, you know, it, it it would be a, it would be a huge pain, and it'd be a huge loss if somebody stole stolen your rights. Um, the other thing you want to make sure is they want you want to uh, consult with your lawyer about a distribution agreement. You know, which is separate, which basically gives you um, an understanding of what it is uh, when you want to negotiate with um, with distributors. Um, if you also need to raise a fiscal um, sponsorship, which is basically an official form for an agreement um, for fundraising, do that with your con consultant as well. The other thing I want to talk to you about is selecting your audiences. And I mentioned this in the previous slide. Um, you want to make sure that your audiences are... are um, relevant to your to your um, um, to your project I mean again you know if you have a film that's for 14 year olds and stuff um, you generally want to find people that are at least 14 and maybe no older than 35 that's just a recommendation same thing with um, a mature audience film um, that's 17 to 35 because and this is important because um, a, a group of teenagers to 35 year olds will likely have more success than anybody uh, younger or older than that age so that's something to consider as well um, I want to I want to try and tell you one more thing quickly If you can, if you can understand, um, and if you can actually find a distributor, then don't take them lightly. Um, you know, again, this is the biggest thing. Consider it a privilege, and um, just make sure you do everything right because, you know, your royalties and your project is at stake. And though, and once you have. That that basically concludes the the, 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 the the marketing portion of it. I mean, you can also share on social media. In my opinion, it's not very effective, but you can you just come up with ways to promote everything and, and see how far it will take you. So now we're getting to the video side and the video side of it is also the same company that is um, that is hosting a very professional word office kind of pr product and and the name of this corporation is called Corel they've been around since 1989 and um, they were recently acquired in 2019 by another company However, um, some of the products that they have um, include WordPerfect, which is an office suite, and Video Studio. They acquired Roxio. They they used to have the Corel Draw products. So they're a very good design company and product productivity company. So the two the two key the two key products I want to focus on 
by them is um, Video Studio and WordPerfect. So Video Studio is basically a, a comprehensive suite uh, of, of, of video editing, video capturing, uh, video production tools, and video encoding tools. And you can basically do everything you wanted to do if, if in there. You can import video clips. You can, um, what else can you do? You can do overlays. You can put in some subtitles as captions. I'll talk about that more in, uh, in a few minutes, but you can also add your own music. You can basically do what you want. Oh, and it's really cool that you can export it to HD and stuff as well. Um, I have a version from 2014-ish, I believe, maybe 2016 or so, that, um, that can basically do pretty much all that. So the other, um, that's actually how I made the one by one documentaries is with the combination of my phones and Corel Video Studio products. The other, the other thing that comes to mind um, when, when marketing your materials is uh, drafting a lot of documents in WordPerfect um, and then publishing to PDF from WordPerfect as well. So this includes like a producer's note, this includes copyright notices, this includes pretty much anything you can write with. But the really cool thing is, um, I believe it is as of WordPerfect X7 I had in 2014, you can publish it um, to PDF integrated. And not just that, you can publish it from, uh, from uh, spreadsheets, you can publish presentations, I'm not in any way related to Corel, but I am just telling you that that is probably the best way to go um, as far as um, composing and marketing and producing your content. Um, in a couple minutes, I will be showing you just a couple of examples of what, you, of what the screen looks like, and um, we will also go from there, but we're going we're gonna to wrap up this presentation sometime soon. I promise. Thank you. The other thing I forgot to mention is Corel Draw has a uh, website designer, and uh, though I didn't make my website with website designer, I did make a website myself. So um, just keep that in mind as well. Thanks. I want to talk to you about one more critical thing for uh, for your success and that's to build a website. Now I found an application um, which you can design your website totally for free, offline, um, and limitless possibilities um, called MobiRise. It's available for Windows and Mac and basically how it works is you find uh, themes that they give you for free it's a drag and drop builder and um, basically what the really cool thing is is a couple of things you can make buttons you can make um, you can make um, unlimited pages you can um, use your FTP um, uploader inside the application to host and publish the website um, but I want to talk a little bit more about the the paid extensions because the paid extensions are really what sets it apart. I mean, you can you can you for probably less than two hundred dollars um, because there's always a sale going on. You can buy the um, extensions, um, everything instead of paying fifty bucks a piece um, for about less than two hundred dollars. Sometimes less than one hundred dollars. And that will give you um, key elements such as uh, connections to your PayPal right from the uh, right from the website. 
um, you'll get to use SoundCloud and media features and uh, just basically make counters um, everything you can imagine in, in, in uh, what's essential for a website to be complete is is included in MobiRise and their extensions and so what the really cool thing is is again it's for Windows and Mac um, it's free for commercial and nonprofit use which is a huge plus and again I'm not selling you on the idea but um, if you want to look at some of the possibilities available with MobiRise just take a look at MobiRise.co or even better yet go to my website www.gregorychemist.com it also integrates with Cloudflare well as well thank you I want to tell you about one last thing that is required of of you to be a success in uh, marketing and everything else. Um, everybody needs accessibility, and that's where closed captioning comes in. Um, by law, it's required in the United States and probably some other countries. I want to tell you about a little secret about how to generate them, and I'd probably charge for it, but it's included in this presentation. You know all this all this information that I'm giving you over the last few slides is very valuable information if you know how to use it right um, so I want you to go to um, a I want you to go to a, a website called divxland.org and um, you will see or you can just look at the screenshot in this uh, in this um, in this slide but basically what you see is a is a drag and drop interface where basically it lets you uh, preview the um, preview the video it it lets you time the um, the, 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 the things you want to do and believe me timing is a is a challenge if you don't know how to do it but again I've done all this so I, I basically know how to do it but what's really cool is that you can also preview it on the screen. You can save it as an SRT, which is compliant for closed captions. And everything else that um, you will need for subtitles is already within there. Plus, it's free. Now, I'm not, I'm not a sponsor of this, but I wish I could be because the advantage of having closed captions, besides it being an asset for the deaf and hard of hearing, is even if you're not... The, uh, even if you're not um, limited with hearing, you watch something with uh, closed captions like this, and you know how to do this, and pretty soon you can make DVDs or you can make um, you can make something with these subtitles, and um, you won't have to wa watch your presentation as loud. Plus, it, it it for me what the advantage has been with doing this is that because I've studied closed captions since about 2000 when I was in almost a sophomore in high school I um, I was able to look at the formatting and I was able to look at uh, I was able to look at um, the uh, the uh, yeah the formatting almost all the time when I would watch it and what I learned from it is it improved my English fluency almost 2000 percent over 10 years and so I really encourage you guys to uh, learn how to do this and you can learn how to do this by simply typing out what you want to say like a script and then timing it and you can place it on your video you can even preview it on your video with this application this application is is something beyond my belief when I first saw it so I want you to check it out thanks
I wanted to thank you for um, taking your time to look at all these slides and take a look at um, take a look at the materials and advice I have for you. Um, I wanted to go ahead and uh, invite you to join the Facebook group where called the Official Artist Community and Support Page. The Facebook group is a private group and it's free um, to apply. Um, that's where we're going to communicate with with everybody who wants to join it and um, that's going to give you updates and and other things that the uh, for free that as like a self-paced type of communications between members and stuff um, the other option you have is to join the website with a with a couple membership deposits and you can get more things like consultations you can get uh, you can get content you can get um, as soon as it's available you'll be able to get some courses as well I also wanted to let you know that uh, if you're interested in uh, us doing some projects for you or some affiliate marketing you should uh, sign up for membership as as only certain types of audiences will get done done for you pro projects so um, if you want to go ahead and um, check out my website um, www.gregorychemist.com that's the official artist community and membership page um, for the paid clients um, if you want to uh, if you want to become involved but aren't quite ready yet join the face book group as you can have a lot of discussions and stuff um, of course I am the administrator of everything else but I'm pretty welcoming towards new prospects and uh, again um, as one of the special offers I have for you tonight um, I'm just inviting you to join my Facebook group um, the official artist community and support page before you sign up um, for the uh, the paid membership and the paid features on the website. Um, I'm also going to leave this up. Um, this 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 will remain a recording eventually for purchase because it did take a little bit of my time and it did take um, and it did give you some advice on how to complete things. But this is the start of some new courses and um, I hope to see you on the list very shortly. Again. Thank you very much for, for participating. Hope you have a great night. Thanks all. Bye.